So we have the feminist, quote unquote, Christian, unquote, really angry that I am describing why it is fair for a man to demand a virgin at the wedding, right? She says, the ones who say the quiet parts out loud. And she said, were you a virgin when you got married? First off, pause. I'm still debating marriage as an opportunity in my mind because I'm not a fucking cuckold, right? I'm not going to get cucked by the U.S. government. But the idea of having a mother for my children is somewhat appealing. But that the appeal of it goes down every day. I'm slowly just, you know what? I make the money. I'm just going to buy some surrogates. She says, were you a virgin when you got married? I said, nope, right? So I'm not saying I was married. I'm saying there is no possibility I'm going to be a virgin at marriage because I'm not a virgin. I said, but that's not as important as female virginity. Tell me, were you taller than your husband when you got married? Question mark. Richer? Question mark. She says, women's bodies are not possessions. So wait, wait, wait. If women's bodies are not possessions and me wanting a virgin means that she's my possession, what does it mean when you demand a man that's taller than you? Does that mean you view men's bodies as possessions? What do you think about that, Jess? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really sad how they only boil a man down to how tall he is. There's so much more to a man than just that. Like his wallet, the friends he has, how much he lifts at the gym, his wallet again, right? So, so me saying female virginity is important is me treating women's bodies as possessions. But women saying men's height is important, how much money they make is important, isn't treating men's bodies as possessions? Like, what they just say is, we're not possessions. Quite literally, you are, okay? If you don't act like a possession to me, I'm not going to protect you. If I don't get domination over you in a marriage, I'm not going to marry you, but let's say that let's say that you don't get provision. Why would I protect you? You're a buck wild cur. You're a wild mongrel female dog running around spreading rabies. Syphilis, really. You want me to protect you? Provide for you? Lord forbid a man doesn't pay his mortgage because he doesn't feel like it. But these Christian women will be like, she, this is the same chick that says women don't owe men sex on their wedding night. She actually tweets that out. Hmm. So women don't owe men sex, but men owe women protection and provision. This is why all these Christian females on social media, they don't worship God. They worship themselves. Whatever position gives the fat, overweight, used up, post-wall, Christian woman more power, she supports it. I bet she's pro-choice. I bet she's pro-child support and alimony. I bet you if a man divorced his wife because she was cheating on him and the baby was born the day before the divorce, she would be pro he should still pay child support because he's presumed to be the father despite a negative paternity test. I guarantee you she believes it. It's, because it's not hard to understand what women believe in. They believe you should give them your shit. It's pretty easy to understand what they believe, right? So, never answered this question, by the way. Never asked, ne never said I, he was taller than me and he was richer. Well, here's the thing. They say, you're a hypocrite. You, as a non-virgin, can't demand a virgin bride, Okay. Well, why can you demand a dude that's five foot ten when you're five foot two? What's the difference? What no, seriously, what's the difference? The difference is women want one of those things. They want to avoid the responsibility of being a thought, and they want to demand a man that's taller than them, stronger than them, richer than them, more social than them, more respected than them. And that's not a problem. See, these aren't double standards. These are different standards. Men and women are different. It really comes down to the fact that men and women are different. And they're just like, of course they're different. But when it comes to actually <sighs> acknowledging those differences and verbalizing them, speaking them into words, 
you know, men shouldn't marry a sloot because a sloot is different than a male sloot. Because guess what? No matter what these women say, no matter how they read, 80% of divorces are initiated by women. 80%. And if they have more sex before marriage, they're more likely to initiate a divorce. This isn't a religious argument. I'm not, I could make a religious argument. I could make a biological argument. I could make an emotional argument. This is a statistical argument. The more schlong you take before your wedding night, the more likely you are to divorce your husband. And newsflash... Men don't like divorce. Crazy, right? They, this is back to Red Pill 101. This is like Manosphere basics. Men don't want to get divorced. Promiscuous women divorce more. Men shouldn't marry promiscuous women. Is that, is that too complicated, Chess? No, I think I can get it. Okay. Ma makes sense to me. Yep. Let us. Uh, let me just play this meme real quick for the boys. Because we're about to go into the comment section. What? We can't open. Down here. Okay. Well, okay. Salt is a way of life. <laughs> Obviously, the environment down here is all salt. The, the ceiling. Wait, let's, let's continue. Down here, salt is a way of life. <laughs> Obviously, the environment down here is all salt. The, the ceiling salt, the floor the salt, salt, the walls the are salt. salt. And all salt. The, the ceiling salt, the floor is salt, the walls are salt, and to an extent, the air is salt. And you breathe that in, and you can constantly taste the salt. I love that clip so much. Everything yeah. is salt. The ceiling is salt, the floor is salt, even a little bit of the air is salt. Here we go. Look at this is some salt. X X Ace. The blind leading the blind. Ace as an asexual. Okay. These guys want virgins because they don't want her to be able to identify that they suck in bed because she hasn't been with anyone else to compare to. Quote tweet. I like my partner with fresh semen on their face there you go i'll just do this live for you guys i said i've never been quiet about it heathen no hymen no diamond now look did i get ratioed by three 55 comments 52 likes right this tweet has 345,000 views people are interested and a man standing up and defending no hymen, no got no diamond. But let's assume half of them are feminists. So uh, maybe I maybe I maybe I was uh, clickbaiting. I only pissed off one hundred and seventy one thousand feminists on Twitter. But hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. Let's continue. You don't, which I said, I've never been quiet. You don't understand how female anatomy works. I say, I did not make an anatomical claim. Try again, non-virgin. <laughs> I got, I, I have to insult them, right? Yes, you did. Hymen's existing or not existing means nothing in regards to virginity. So I said, and that's what she said. It means nothing regards to virginity. So wait, if I take a hundred thousand women with hymen's, and 100,000 women without hymens. And I was like, Chaz, choose the group that has the more ver has the most versions. Which one are you going to choose? Hymens all the way. Huh. You see, we get to the crux of the issue. These people have bitch think, right? They think, I know one case of a woman who tore her hymen when she did a backflip when she was eight and impaled her puniti on a swink. Therefore, hymens existing or not means nothing in regards to virginity because I have one specific case where it does. Like, hmm. like, here's the thing. Every single person on Earth wants to believe that they are some sort of special exception to the rule, that they are the 1% that makes them different from, like, the 99% of the rule. And guess what? That's not how fucking math and statistics work. The vast majority of the time, you are part of the 99% statistic. So I said, 99%, it's just... 
So I said, so there's zero association between hymens and virginity? Not a single association that is statistically powerful. You women live in fantasy land. More like you live in fantasy land. Some people aren't even born with a hymen. I don't know. What percentage are born without a hymen? We are talking numbers, not feelings, and your loose puniti. The fact, like, can the hymen tear an accident? Yes. What percentage of hymens that get torn are torn off an accident? What percentage of women without hymens are born without hymens? I'll tell you that. It's less than 1%. It's like 0.05%. It's tiny. Negligible. Not significant. But I'm talking to men here on this channel. You guys can understand that, right? Like, let's say someone walks up to you completely covered in blood right uh oh what you, what's your reaction someone just got fucking stabbed in the alleyway yep, right? yep. Just, or just soaked in blood well every yes. now and then there's a dude that leaves his butcher job and his car breaks down so he has to call an uber and has to get home and he's covered in blood that exists so the next time a woman sees a man approach her covered in blood she shouldn't treat him any differently because, you, they, you know, that's fantasy land to treat. It, it's fantasy land to think about statistics. Let's see. This guy, this guy is pretty good price. He says, if I grab a glass of clean water and hand it to you, you can drink clean water still because I only touched the glass. But if I put my hand in the clean water and hand it to you, I've, d I've done contaminated it by sticking my dirty hand in it. Now, imagine I stick... My, my dick penis. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Thank, and then they say, "Thankfully, I'm not a glass of water." It's just, God forbid, you make some kind of comparison. They always then try to make out like you're comparing them to an inanimate object. It's just, well, look, you can't. When when they argue off of emotions. And they refuse to actually have a conversation with me. They are basically inanimate objects or animals without a conscious. Like they're, they're non sentient animals. They get their talking points, they get their soul, they get their character from social media. Is that a person? Eh, not really. Yeah. I mean, nope. He's being too Ollie specific. It's almost like he is accustomed to getting dumped before marriage for being too short. Just a Harvard girl who wants to make this world a better place. Please buy me a coffee and I love you forever. And so I retweeted wow. and I said, I retweeted and I said, wow, Harvard degree really helping you out because you're here on Twitter begging for donations. <laughs> wow. I mean, like. You Ooh. are being pretty specific about it, right? But then whenever a chick demands that he be six foot tall, I just, that's I reply, you got. Specific. I say you got dumped for having a loose poon. <laughs> just look if they're just gonna say that. I'm just gonna, it, once they go to the insults, I'll just insult them bad. Yeah. The reason why they want a virgin, if they're the only ones to touch her, she won't know what disappointment feels like. If I had to guess, disappointment is about two inches in two minutes. Says Beth. Let's let's look at Beth's Twitter account. Yeah, this is the girl who's saying Ooh, I have a micro wow. Damn, Beth. Copy that. Wow. Quote it. You look like a Egyptian mummy that went to Sephora and got two pounds of Botox put in your ancient face. And then put the picture of the face. There you go. I love this. Something tells me male virginity isn't as important unless it's to men. Then it's so important. That's pretty much the yeah. That's 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 true. And then this guy he posted Stefan Molyneux, who basically agreed with it. Right. Let's continue down. I just love it when men aren't virgins but demand their mates be. I always ask, gee, what happened to the woman you've had sex with before? And what if all women decided to live as virgins before marriage? What then? Um, let's see here. 
Copy. This is so easy. Just copy. Paste. I love it when uh, women aren't tall, but demand their mates be. It's dude, It's so easy. It's just, it's just too easy to slap them across the face, man. Sai says, chronic, make it stop. No, 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 we're continuing. Damn, these guys just flat out calling women property. Never did that. Like they would a table or chair or luggage. Property can't divorce you and force your kids to transition. There you go. Virgin men are appealing. I wouldn't shame one for not being one, even though I don't like man horse. I don't get why they pretend that a virgin man isn't attractive. Less likely he'll cheat on you. He'll react better at your touch. You're generally unique to him. I completely agree with that. I actually completely agree with that. I, you know, it's true. I would prefer my daughters marry a virgin man. I do not understand the logic in the screenshot. If you're tall and rich, your virginity is not important. <laughs> it's literally, yes. Literally, as a man, yes. <laughs> it's just, what do you, hey, Chaz, who do you think gets more bitches? A dude that his qualifying person, his qualifying trait is he's a virgin or the guy who's tall and rich? Who do you think gets more access to virgin women? Tall and rich guy. because the, the tall and rich guy is probably having fathers ask, will you marry my daughter? So. We'll continue mining salt in one moment. 